What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Mike and Max Off-Road Podcast, the fastest-growing off-road podcast in the nation, where we are truly going off-road again. I'm your host, Mike Austin. <laughs> I'm Max Kraus, and we're taking you from the garage to the trail to the studio. Wherever you want to go in your wildest dreams. Just Whoa. follow us, like that page, send a review, and we'll, take, we'll make all your wildest dreams come true. Right here. Just checking. What? what? I don't know if we had to travel for this. <laughs> no, like Pedro from Napoleon Dynamite. Just vote for me and I'll make all of your wildest dreams come true. Kind of like the current situation in the politics. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-mm. No, that's fine. We don't want to get in there. <laughs> I hate it when I look up there and I only watch us. I don't look at the camera. So it doesn't look like I'm actually looking at the people. Yeah. Gosh, Crazy, huh? I got to get more professional. Mm-hmm. All right, you, bro. You're not cloudy today. Your eyes are... You're, yeah, you're, you're you got it chilling in here. Yeah. It's nice. It's, well, it's the outside temperature makes it nice. Dude, right. So we did... Let's just get this shit out of the air. Ooh. We went four-wheeling. We will talk about that later in this podcast. I oh. am so happy. I went four-wheel riding along. It doesn't matter. We got out. It was nice. It was we got nice. out, and it turned in awesome. So we'll get into that in the main topic, but uh, stick around for that shit. We also have a product review today, which we're about to open back here. As soon as we catch up on some other crap. Nice. Uh, so that way I don't have to do an intro to this. Nice. Even better. You know what I mean? Right. Even better. Episode 33, dog. Whoa. Right. Right. I was looking at one of my Instagrams the other day, and it's, I had like quit writing what was the current episode, you know? But I changed the link, but I forgot to um, like update like the number of the episode just in the text. Oh, yeah. And it said like 25 or something. Dude, <laughs> I me like, too. I, I think my stuff's like... Way pre King yeah. of the Hammers, dude. <laughs> I keep forgetting. It's that hard part. to keep up with every little. Yeah, well, so many little it's details. honestly not that hard, but it is. There, there's just a lot, and then like if you get sidetracked, or you know, if you're busy, then you forget like one little thing. And yeah, some of us are essential. Yeah, that's right, folks. We're essential. <laughs> Someone said, "Somebody pay attention to those essential jobs out there, kids. That's the ones you want." Yeah, I saw that. That was cool. Yeah. It's pretty crazy, the um, except for everybody else is getting paid, <laughs> you know, to be home, and we still don't have a vacation. Not everybody, no. Like I think, like pretty much everyone that's like a bartender, server, especially, yeah. that just stands out right away. Like I think some of them just got sent home. Like nice, good luck. No, nice. I mean, not no, nice, no, no money. No yeah, money. I nice. guess true. Like those waitresses, that's stressful. And stuff. Yeah, you know. I, I I was gonna say I haven't known anybody that it's affecting yet. Oh, okay. We haven't really been on lockdown. Yeah. So. No. Hopefully not. Yet. Right. Or. Right. So, ah. updates. You got your aluminum links. Yes. What's your plans with those? To install them. Yeah, tomorrow? Mm. Saturday? The, that, that's the plan, yes. You're still just taking a vacation from <laughs> Wheeling? It's yeah. going to be hot before you know it. That's okay. All right. Then um, then we'll do um, all the pace and flag stuff, stuff that we never got around to last year. Yeah, right. I got, my, like, dead dough wash. Yeah. Right. Exactly. I, I got. Don't, don't give it away. It's a secret. Oh, yeah. It's a secret trail. Right. It's a hashtag, no hashtag <laughs> sick invite, bro. Yeah, that's funny. I still need to make a shirt. That oh, that's right. We need Angel to make a shirt because I think that's what he does or whatever. You know, I, I was going to, I went to his website to buy some shirts because yeah. I had bought some in the past. The one that said, uh, in traction we trust. I think, oh, yeah. I think you've seen it. But um, I couldn't find any shirts. I think it's just stickers right now. Oh. Or, or there's a couple shirts, but it was like size small. So I don't know if I was looking at something wrong or not. It's kind of like our website or my website yeah. where everything's out. Yeah. Sold out yeah. except for like one small he, females girl. But I or, swear he used to have tons of shirts and hoodies and stuff, and I, I couldn't even find it. I want the one that just says, uh, must be nice. Yeah. It must be that's nice. All, I, I like that's That was such a good one, too, his yeah. podcast. I agree. All right, cool, man. Um, what well, else? Did, Any did more you, updates? No. You know anybody uh, with coronavirus yet? Nobody? No. Nope. Me neither. Not, not. I mean, I know people that are sick or like. Do you? <laughs> you know what? Speaking of which, uh, you you folks here can't see this, but there's actually plexiglass right here. Yeah. See, watch. See? <laughs> that was so, good. That was good. <laughs> the uh, uh, that way we're we're um, doing. So if I so- sneeze, I don't social, have to cover it. So <laughs> I can just spray. Well, it. you don't want to see it on the camera, so you uh, have to go the other way. So yeah, social distancing right here. We're we should, actually we in should different get a locations. Piece of gla- a plexiglass just. Even to be funny. <laughs> and we have to hold it. We each have to put pressure against... It'd be like we're holding yeah. hands, dude. The hell with that. No way. That's how... It's, it's not that I'm homophobic, but mm. I'm homophobic. 
right? Oh. <laughs> so if we wow. did that, that's too close for me, bro. I couldn't even fake Dude, it. Dude, I'll get the 10 millimeter one, the thick one. I'll tell you what, though. I found a website, or not a website, but a YouTube channel today uh-huh. called Dana White is looking for a fight. <laughs> okay. And he's driving around with like two other MMA fighters, you know, and they're out looking for new fighters, you know, oh, to, to oh, promote. Oh, not in the and street. Stuff. No, 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 oh. to promote. Well, they're in Sturgis and they're with. The, I forget the guy's name, but some black dude that was in like season seven, Ultimate Fighter. Okay, is this older? Yeah, uh, okay. I don't know. I just I don't know when oh. it came out, but it's it is hysterical, dude. Because the black guy couldn't pass his motorcycle riding test. Oh no! So he just decided to ride on the back of Dana's no bike, way. <laughs> dude. And no in the way. video, Dana's like, he's like. You know, it was kind of weird, but then I saw all these chicks out here at Sturgis, and I was all right with the guy I had on the back, except for he had a huge dick and was poking <laughs> oh, me in the no, fucking what? back. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, ah, oh, dude, it's funny, man. It's uh, really funny. And then the big muscle guy, the white dude, he couldn't ride a bike either, so they got him in a sidecar. Oh, so there's one motorcycle. Well, yeah, but uh, he ended up having like somebody else ride the motorcycle. So like, oh. like one of the production crew or something. Oh, okay. But the dude's in the back and he's like, I like the sidecar. And then he whips him up on his side and lifts him <laughs> off. He's like, whoa, bro, whoa. You know, here's yeah, these, you got no control. Here's these huge muscle guys, yeah. you know, and they're just freaking out like a bunch of girls. It's pretty funny. So what is it called again? Dana White is looking for a fight. Okay. It's really funny. It's funny. Nice. But anyway. I, have to, I have to look it up this weekend <laughs> yeah. since I'm not doing nothing. Right. No, I'm doing. I got a lot of stuff to do. Yeah, I'm gonna put it. I got my radiator in. Nice. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get. Well, I don't have it in the Jeep, but I got it. Yeah, in the you got house. it in the mail. So I ordered a different one. So the problem with Ron the one da- that Ron Davis. No, I couldn't mm. afford that. This is uh, something with an A. Assault off of uh, oh Amazon. It was super cheap, like 106 bucks. The other ones I've been buying were 300 bucks, and they oh. but apparently they're glued together. Okay, right. This is what I've been finding out. So. This one, it states right in it, <clears throat> no cheesy epoxy, no glue, no nothing. Everything is 100% aluminum and $106, dude. And I was like, to hell with it. Damn. Even at that, it's worth the try. Yeah. The dimensions are close to what I have. <clears throat> the tanks are a little bit different. Okay. Um, the so si- The sides are the tanks? Yeah. And you yeah. know, if the wheelies, if you've seen it in there, everything is so tight. It's tight. So I may have to cut and notch one of the tanks or I might have to refinagle it around the steering well, just box. Just re-weld it? Yeah, what? yeah. I mean, I'm okay with welding a tank. Yeah, but um, I couldn't weld the fins. No way. But, but I'm Just gonna take the blow a hole into it. Yeah. I'm gonna oh, take okay. the one out and be like, "Here's my review of this radiator." I'm gonna slam an axe through it because it's horrible, bro. I'm so sick of them leaking everywhere. You know, right? I like it. Self leveling. I like it. Still works though. You know what? You know what? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I think you flooded that gas station last week. I know, coolant. right? That's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> we pulled up to the gas station uh, when we went wheeling. And I had just filled the radiator because I know it has a hole in it. <clears throat> I go up to the gas, ta- gas tank and literally covered the entire underneath my Jeep yeah. with radiator fluid. But it's kept cool the whole way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what in the world? How weird that you can run half the level of your radiator. That's insane, And it's huh? ideal. Yeah. Well, it's probably not ideal, but it works good. I, what, uh, what was that guy's name? Jesse or Jason? Mm-hmm. Jesse? Jesse. 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 That went wheeling with us? Yeah. Jesse. I love that he says uh, he pulls up and he's like, dude, I was like, oh, my God, this thing's old, dude. Are we going to have to do 50 miles an hour up this hill? <laughs> and then you, and then you <laughs> pulled away from everyone. Everybody. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Catch me in the hills, bitch. Oh. I get scared going downhill. But I don't know what was up with Steve, bro. When you guys left, you guys were doing like 85, man. Really? I was doing 75 and couldn't keep up. You pulled away. So I don't know. I don't know. He, he was hauling ass, dude. Maybe we were just talking and no, yeah. we weren't even in front. Yeah, you were. Because you guys slowed down for me to catch uh-huh. up. Not on the way out. We're talking down the mountain. Oh, so, oh, going home? Yeah. And it's oh, weird. I've always been sketched with the hydro steering, you know, going downhill. Because every now and then my Jeep just turns left hard. <laughs> what? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> No, so, I don't. I don't know. I think that it, it shouldn't hits, do that. No, I think it hits a bump and I turn the wheel. And with the hydro, it goes. Yeah, yeah. If you do, um, yeah, you have to hold it still. You almost have to hold it like this. Like yeah. just hold it very still. Very Because if, if you do, if you, <laughs> if you hit a bump, like your body moves and you slam the wheel to the side, the wheels are going to go. Yeah, it goes oh, when yeah. you turn it. It's yeah. like German engineering now. Yeah. There's no well, sway. And it at goes. high RPMs, um, you have a lot of rotation on the pump. Oh. So you're, you're cr- you probably have, um, you're moving a lot of fluid. So like when the fluid's moving slow, like in a parking lot, do you ever have it where you're like, you're limited to how fast you can turn the wheel? No, I haven't had that yet. Oh, that's good. <clears throat> but, but luckily I got four and a half turns. Yeah. You know? Oh, that's right. That's right. You so it's that, like that box. Freaking dump truck. But um, if you have uh, 3000 RPM pushing into the box. Right. 
I, I think you have all the everything you need for just tiny adjustments are big movements, you know? I right. mean roughly. Roughly. I'm not don't quote me on that. <laughs> Dude, I screwed up. We had a couple questions for this podcast. Remember yeah. from Facebook we yeah. posted up. I didn't write those down like I wanted to. I totally forgot. I I know what one of them is. Okay. It it has to do um you know because the, the Liberty links. was posted on that uh four wheeler yep. four wheeler dot com website by yep. Vern and Trent. Yeah. And um or maybe just Vern. Screw Trent. I think nah, they both did. Okay. Yeah. They're cool. But um uh what one had to do with he was like, What's the big deal on the triangulated rear ends? Remember? Versus yeah. why is everyone talking crap on leaf springs? I don't know. No, there was one that said what's the difference between the tri- dual triangulated versus what Jeep has, which is almost like a parallel. Yep, with a track bar. Yeah. So. Oh, I, maybe there's other comments I didn't see. I especially wouldn't have seen it on Facebook. Right. So t- talk to us. What's the major difference between the old, the original? Yeah, the so, oh, no, he said a long arm kit. That's what it was. So let's say you have a JK and you get a long, long arm kit. Why would you switch that to triangulated, a dual triangulated four link? So it's still just a long arm kit but no track bar right so if if you were to already have a long arm kit on the rear end of a jk with a track bar um the the best the, it's it has to do with that how the axle swing you know with a short arm how we um hmm, i should figure out where i want to start here yeah it, the longer the arm is the less the axle walks underneath the jeep too you know oh, under right. full rear droop. steer so yep. no not necessarily even rear steer even if you just droop it straight down so with a short arm and a long shock, it's going to go under the Jeep more, right? Oh, and a long swing. arm, the, yeah. the swing is physically going to go under the Jeep, the that rear axle. Yeah. And the longer the arm yeah, is, because the circumference it's, is way it's shorter. Gonna, it's going to just move versus go under the Jeep, you know? Yeah. Um, let me think what else. I, di- I definitely like the triangulated rear end because it has no bind also. You know, like I had noticed on my old JK that you know, with with doing like twelve and thirteen inch shocks on it, which isn't even that big, but it's pretty big of an upgrade. Okay. Um, you, oh, excuse me, you like I used to have to put my foot on like the brake calipers and like force it down because all the bushings were binding and the track bars pulling the axle to one side. Really? Which so not only are you like side loading it a little bit, you're also like flexing it. You know, so like you know when a shock is fully pressurized, and if you don't have nitrogen at home, you have you have to install the shock almost fully extended right like if, we do with steve's if you're taking it in and out regularly you know so i'm um, with the dual triangulated i have never had an issue like like that axle can just flop to the ground no matter how high the jeep well zero bind zero bind oh yeah like like my axle could easily go another foot of travel down and uh, articulate side to side but you know that what the limiting factor is now the shocks will run into the body because if you are artic- oh, if you articulate it way you oh, know, yeah. at some point you're gonna like be under the jeep again side the lower to side. half of the body smacks the frame yeah, or so, the jeep or the shock body so i actually have to limit my uh droop. the extension my droop on the shock because um the springs will start hitting the frame of the jeep nice and i don't know if you noticed i had to notch into the frame where um i had to make that room because i i hadn't because the width of my frame and the width of the tires, you know, you're limited on what you can do. Yeah, your shocks space. on the bottom, you pushed them out as far as you could. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, because yeah. under full stuff, my tire actually hits the spring. And under full droop, the springs hit the frame. Whoa. So, like, I, yeah, that's I, a balance. I, I did whatever I could to be perfectly in the middle of that. So, yeah. like, I get light tire rub under full flex. And um, I'm like a hair away from touching the frame under full droop. Nice. And you put limiting straps in there and yep. all that stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, because I, I kicked a spring out of the bucket on oh, the coilover. <laughs> yeah, well, it, awesome. it, imagine the forces and the weight on that stuff. I mean, the, the springs don't care. And under full droop, you might not have a lot of pressure holding those springs in. Have you had that on the CTI trailer yet? No, that'd be dope. No. I want to see only an RTI ramp. Yeah, killer. OK, so uh, Glenn Fitzpatrick Ooh. says uh, he'd love to know more about the steering setup um, on my on my Liberty. Yep. Ooh. It's here. I know the BDS rig has a box with a RAM assist. What kind of box are you using? And how did you locate them and mount it? And did it work the way you want? Yes. So I use everything from my old JK. The It's actually a JK steering box that's tapped and drilled All right. for hydro assist. And then I have a P, PSC kit like with the pump 
the RAM, the lines, the cooler. Um, they made a PSC pump for that Jeep? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. Wow. So it's a high it's a high pressure pump for a 37 motor, which is different than a JK pump cuz I gave my pump to one of our buddies, you right. know. So did you have to build a mount on the frame to for the pump to, or for the box to fit? Yes. And I know you know, but um we added a frame rail. Yeah. And what I did is um two, you know, the, the JK box has four uh bolts, right? Like this. Yeah. And the two lower bolts actually go through the frame with dowels, you know, the, to the reinforce. Lower one, the one we added. Correct. Okay. And then the top is actually uh, plated on both sides yep. and the dowels again. And then that plating is just, um, you know, the, the loads all spread out and welded all over the unibody and into the actual frame. So I'm um, all. F- well, all four bolts are actually in, in that box. So you have ram assist. Is it is it the lowest part or where is it at in relation to the tie rod? Do you remember? It sits, um, no, it sits above the tie rod. Just, okay. it, it probably sits like, you know, from the bottom of a, of the tie rod, it probably sits one inch higher than that. Just so no low dragging rocks that might clear the tie rod and hit the axle will hit the ram. Kind of where but it did close. on the JK. Sort of the same place. A little better, yeah. Okay. But you ended up making that mount or were you able to buy a mount for it? For the box? Yeah, for the ram part where it hooks to the axle? That is, um, I I used a track bar mount, yeah, like like a JK track bar mount, and um, so it has it has like four holes in it. I think it's an Artec okay. track bar mount, and um, it's actually for the rear axle, but I used it in the front because I already had it, right? <laughs> and it, it's it's the same. You know, if, if you if you build it yourself, you can kind of make stuff work. Yeah. And, well, that's um, what I'm asking is to see what you. So did. the track bar is probably mounted like three holes up. And then I drilled another half inch hole into the track bar mount that's kind of closer to the pumpkin. Okay. If that, you know, it's not on the, the the PSC RAM. It's pretty limited on space how deep you can mount something. Right. So where the lowest hole was was actually way too deep into the mount. You know where a track bar could just slide into the mount yeah. and you slide a bolt through. The PSC mount doesn't have that kind of clearance. So I just drilled a half inch hole straight through with a half inch bolt nut yep. bolt. And that's actually what holds the RAM to the track bar mount. And then um, I, I bought an inch and three quarter uh, tie rod clamp, welded my double shear to that. Yep. And uh, so it's basically the same setup as what the JK did have. And you run an inch and a half aluminum front? Inch tie and rod? three quarter. Inch and three quarter. Mm-hmm. Solid aluminum. Yep. Because nice. the inch and a half was really like flexing on even my JK and yeah. a couple of our buddies that have inch and a half aluminum. It would bow like a banana. And we broke one. So <laughs> Well, at home. We yeah, broke one still. at home in, in, in uh, Bender, but by hand. Yeah, not, by not, hand. Not, this is before the air over yeah, hydraulic assist, you know, or, right. or air, air ram hydraulic. So if you haven't done that yet, you literally need to tack everything you can because yes. there is a ton of stuff in the way. Well, and you, you've seen how, I think you even commented on how tight my front end is. Everything. Between the tie rod, the track bar, and the drag link. And the diff cover. I mean, and the diff cover. Everything. And it is extremely tight. Like to where and the my, radiator. my uh <laughs> drag link actually goes downhill, like under full stuff, it goes downhill to the pitman arm. Whoa. Where the tie rod would still be straight, you know? So then when it droops, of course it'll it'll So at ride height, everything's pretty much level. Oh yeah. It's tight. <clears throat> nice. That's and, good. And th- there was a lot of trial and error with that where I actually had to like, you know, I was really stressing on where the box would go yeah. because the the pitman arm bolt that holds the the, the sector shaft nut, yep. um, it was actually in the way several times where I couldn't um, have full compression on the axle against the frame because that would hit. So you know? this is great. So you did, you put the tie rod on, put the drag yep. link on, put everything on yep. before you mounted the box and you flexed it a few mm-hmm. times, squatted everything. Mm-hmm. And then and where the location was, you added the box. Yep. Wherever it landed. Yep. So, and I, and that, that's that actually, work. that's actually, it was really hard to do in the garage. So like the box was actually in there with like ratchet straps and it was kind of, you know, roughly where it needed to be. Yeah. Just ratchet strapped in there and, and you know, then another strap just holding the weight and then you try to center it and hold it where you need it. And then, you know, you have to mark the holes and all this stuff. And remember, the engine was in the engine bay. Yep. It wasn't con- uh, at the time. I don't remember if it was connected or not, but it was sitting in the engine bay. And I mean, drilling those holes was a beast of a right. job to, to get done. That's really good to know, because when I was building mine, you know, like I just had the frame. There wasn't nothing really yeah. in there. I'm like, oh, I'll just throw the box yep. here. And I welded that shit in. Yep. And later, when I finally made it around to connecting the front end, 
my pitman arm was hitting the tie rod. Yeah. So I ended up having to get a custom pitman yep. arm made that was short, and I lost my returning radius yep. because it doesn't have the swing it had. So does this guy also have a Liberty? I don't P- know. Potentially. Um, so, But a quick recap. It's basically everything out of a JK, but my biggest difference is on my Liberty, we added a frame. It's a 2-inch by 3-inch uh, rectangular <laughs> 180 wall, not tubing, but um, square stock or I, yeah, I don't know what you call it. Tubing, yeah. Oh, okay. It's still tubing. And um, so that, so I actually have two inches more depth that allowed me to mount that box a little easier, you know. Yeah. And and it and one way or the other, you're gonna have to add something down there for those lower bolts to hook to. Um, I think you could mount it higher. Oh. Okay. You know, I'm sure people that don't like the BDS. Uh, Project KJ. Yeah. Um. They they don't have a frame, and I think they just plated it, and their box probably just sits two inches higher. There's technically room to go up and down. There's not a lot of room to go back and forth. Nice. So I probably have uh three quarters of an inch before I hit the radiator. Okay. In yeah, front right. of the box. It's amazing how and, much shit you got to pay attention. And to. behind that, I actually had an extremely hard time getting my steering shaft into the the receiver of the the steering box because I can't go forward any. I can't go back any. Well, I was being lazy. I didn't want to cut the shaft. You know, yeah. so I actually had to like loosen. I took three of the bolts out and I had to pivot it and then like get that knuckle on there and like slam it back in <laughs> and um, not fun- slam it. But that's funny you mentioned that because I have to pull my steering column loose and shove it out into the cab to get my my stuff. Oh, in. so same same thing. Yeah. yeah. Luckily, mine's just a clamp. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? But it was cool when um <laughs> When I converted it all for the Liberty, I had just called PSC and I told him what engine I had, what Jeep I had. And the guy was like, yeah, you need this part number. Um, so uh, the only thing pump. you didn't do was you didn't add a cooler to it and you did have some overheating issues yes. in the beginning. Yeah. And you've added the cooler and that's been yep. fixed. Exactly. Cool. So another note here is uh, this guy, Daryl Nokes. Nokes? 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 Yeah, just Daryl. Okay. Okay, Daryl. <laughs> I just want to say this is funny because he says... Uh, he, he says, digging it, man. Make it shit cool when there's no hope. Uh, <laughs> I was like, yeah, nice. that's cool. So anyways, he said, no, really, man. It's pretty cool. So, um, But I thought that was funny. Nice. The no hope part was hysterical to me. Let's see here. So we have um, the BDS guys had to go in and go, <coughs> like they did uh, it. They yeah, were the yeah. first ones. Yeah, of you know? course. So yeah. They got to give them mad props. That was your main inspiration. Yeah. Right? That, I will say that was for sure like the first big build Liberty. Yeah. But if you really dig down and do some research on the internet, there's a lot of like Dana 44, Dana 30 solid uh, front axle swap Liberties. Yeah. There, there's You could probably find 10 fairly easy. Who's and, that one guy that we went with? That thing was beautiful. He took basically yeah. a TJ carriage underneath and made it. That thing looks factory. The black one? You think it was a TJ carriage? I thought that's what he said. Like oh, a whole front end off a TJ. But the other one, yeah, what's that other that one? Lib, really cool. Lib Nasty. That one's Look awesome. Look that up on Instagram. I, I actually thought, you know, that guy that's had just started beast. posting. And I thought it was like he was just building it. But then like every hour, a new photo came out. And yeah. I was like, it's like. Some bitch is already on the trailer yeah. getting dynoed. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> Six it, pictures it, in. I was like, that was a cool one day build. I know, right? That was awesome. You know what's funny though is he just put, he posted a picture of his rock sliders. And his rear rock slider comes out to a point to a to a sharp Ooh. edge right in front of the rear tire. Yeah. Right. And <clears throat> I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And then I was like, oh, wait a minute. First thing that popped in my head was the red rocket when a dog is sitting there, you know, ah. and you get the red rocket. That's what that looks like <laughs> to me, dude. But anyways. Yeah, there, there's definitely more and more people doing um like liberty builds. Or yeah. or now they stand out, one of the two. I can't you know? even do it anymore. I, hey, can. I was going to do you it. You need an Overlander. I do. I do. I, I was thinking about buying another Liberty for like two or three grand just to have as like an easy dirt road camping like rig. Like a Crown like, King one where you can just nah, go. No, not, not even Crown oh. King's too hard. The front way, yeah. Oh. oh. Not the back way. I thought the back way would be easy. Dude, it's like a quad. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's see here. Uh, do, 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 do. Axel says, uh, um, Alex says he's in love with this build. He's been watching it since. Nice. That's cool. Um, let's see here. Uh, so I remember checking in. There was nothing, nothing, nothing. Mm, interesting. Other than another JK trail. Let's see here. I'm trying to find that one question. Sorry, they ended up having 30 comments on here. Dude. Nice. There's always the ed- magic editing. Yeah. Go ahead and fill a bust. Everybody's posting their shit now. I don't know. What Actually, you don't have to fill means. a bus. It, you really don't. Is that be- fill in content? Yeah, basically just talk. Oh, just make up shit and keep going. Nice. Just to fill the void. But I forgot, you know, I could cut this. So um, I don't see the rest, but I, I don't see where the guy was asking about the links. That must have been on your Instagram. Yeah. Now you, it was on yours, the Keep It Simple one. Was it? Mm-hmm. Fuck. 
Oh well, sorry, I dude. I didn't ask for questions. I I didn't even think about it. But it was yeah. it was a definitely a good idea. I was trying to get as much much traction as you guys could get. You know what I mean? Oh, one thing I did want to cover because I know this was a question was um you've had leaf springs on the rear of your yes. willies and now you have uh you know whatever fifty fifty currently. Yeah, yeah. well, but um, your rear end was leaf springs, yep. and now you have a what single triangulated top with little kick out on the bottom, whatever. So no, it's, it's still partial. theoretically dual okay. triangulated. Cool, but um, do you have you noticed a lot more body roll on the rear end? Not having you know your leaf springs are basically like a like an integrated yeah. sway bar system in a way, right? Yeah. So now that my front leaf, I broke the one and I put an old used one on there. Okay. And it definitely torques over a lot more. So yeah. there's definitely a lot more body roll. Um, because like you said, there's no, nothing holding it anymore, yeah. you know? So, but with the front leaves on, yeah, it, it's still stable. Huh? It's, it's a lot more stable. Like you saw on the, on the trail we went wheeling on, mm -hmm. we had to go up around that guy in the quad or mm -hmm. the razor. Yep. Shit. I was oh, yeah, way up was there, fine. dude, with zero yeah. issues. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where, where we noticed it is, um, following you guys on the freeway. Everyone had a mean lean to the driver's side when, you know, when we're going like uh, 60, 70 miles an hour on the freeway right. and it's a, it's a big uh, turn, like a big, long sweeping turn. I mean, the, all the JKs, they just lean right over, you know, right. but even your willies, man, it had a nice lean to yeah, it. A lot, lot different for sure. Yeah. Do, do you think that got worse <coughs> since you went to coil over? Oh, yeah. oh, okay. That, that's what I was curious about. Yeah. 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 So the guy that says, why do people give leaf springs a bad rap? Yeah. They don't actually. Yeah. Uh, because a lot of people are actually going Oh, there's tons of people still using leaf springs. Yeah. Like the technology in them is unbelievable. Well, it's especially like most trucks, right? Like the rear is, they probably just keep it leaf spring. Yeah. But most straight axle front end swaps go to leaf springs first. Cause they're super easy. You know what I mean? Hmm. But now having both and there, and I currently have the leaf springs in the front yeah. and the coils in the rear. It is a night day difference from back to rear. Yeah. Or back to front. In comfort. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. the back is, the back just glides over the little pebbles, the little dirt roads out nice. to the trails, and the front is just shaking like a broken yeah. shopping yeah. cart. You know what like I mean? Like it can't like, handle it. It has no rebound and yeah, and, you know, and also in the front. So without moving anything, once I get rid of the leaf springs, all that crap that's on top of the axle because I have spring over, mm -hmm. all that will go away. I'm gonna gain like five inches of up travel. Really? Yeah, dude. Like because all this crap hits right now, so I have to stop it. You know what I mean? But you only have this much room of articulation up travel left I mean, yeah but if you get rid of the leaf spring mm -hmm. that's not going to hit now i have that yeah, much okay. more to go yeah, yeah. And so really what you so know, you'll just have a lot of room you might not need the up travel but you'll have it yeah like, but you, it'll be there like right now i have it limited with the mm -hmm. bump stops because yeah. otherwise i start hitting everything it hits frame to the leaf spring and i'm like ah that's interesting so that'll go away without even raising it it'll i'll get, get so it should be a lot better um but leaf springs wise i, I don't think you know it's always been a running joke, kind of like XJs or for kids. You know oh, what I mean? Damn. Like <laughs> I could have got worse. <laughs> it was going worse <laughs> in my head, but the, uh, it's, it's like, you know, leaf springs are for poor people because yeah. they're cheap, dude. They yeah. are cheap and they're simple. You know what I mean? But the, and, and because when you go to a link system, it's so much more crazy expensive yeah. and there's so much more you have to deal with as you're trying to fix it. And now, you know, like I broke a leaf spring. Eh, it has a, yeah, a military in, in five years. You broke I know. one. My point of this though is I broke a leaf spring. The crew got to keep going. I just turned around and yeah. milked it home. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you break a, a link, you ain't going anywhere. Yeah. It until takes you an fix hour. It. <laughs> the, the last time it only took an hour. You're fixing it. That's the <laughs> yes, point. You yes, know what I yes. mean? Like, yep. so especially with a triangulated, um, dude, that axle is ready to right. go somewhere. Like right. it is ready to take off. We're just, er yeah. whoosh, whoosh, gone. Just back forward. <laughs> you have to like winch it back. And it it's, almost it's makes you want to add a track bar. Yeah. yeah. Even do a dual Straighten triangle. out those links and just throw a track bar in there. You in lose the a link. link not a big deal. Yeah, dude. Doesn't it, matter. I'm, I don't know. I'm going to look into it. I'm going to have a five link. There you go. All yeah. Right, so anyways. All right, cool. So yeah, that's it, man. Congratulations on that. For those people that didn't learn, um, you're in the magazine. Nice. The so, it's the online magazine now. So fourwheeler.com. I think that's the only one that stays in print. So that oh. may still end up in print. Because they cool. always release it first, and then it comes out in print. That's how oh, it used to be. I didn't know. Yeah, so like when I did the Hackberry run, yeah. that came out first online, and yep. then eventually came out in the mag. So I believe that magazine's still printing. Interesting. Yeah, it'd be cool, cool if it comes out. So yeah. I'm, I'm keeping an eye on yeah. it. So me too. We well, sign you one let for me, me know. I will. Well, I sign one for you. <laughs> we gotta put. We gotta like put it on the wall. <clears throat> yeah, next to my one because yeah. mine comes out next month. Nice, <laughs> nice. Flat fender aficionado, folks. Anyways, yeah. That's enough. Uh... Oh, yeah. No touching, bro. All right. God damn. Right. Keep your distance, fool.
Freaking okay. effer. What else? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, man. <laughs> hey, safety third, you know? Right. Should you we do some type that. of little, like, um, garage talk for the bo- opening the box? Sure. Cool. Let's go into garage talk, folks. <laughs> And we're here. Right. Nice. All right. You talk about something. Tell somebody I'm a story. Filibust. Filibust. Yeah. I'm going br- so I'm gonna, to I'm gonna tell a story about not this w- last weekend's wheeling because that's oh. after filibusting. So here's actually, here's where I was going with all this, where I sucked at my notes. Oh, okay. That was the first part of the notes with the Facebook stuff that I screwed uh, up on. I have everything about this guy's information. Oh, wait. I have it on I my mean, phone. Yeah. I could bring it up. Hold on. Yeah, we need that info. All right, so here we are, Garage Talk. I'm going to grab the box. Do you want to tell us about these people that we're talking to? Yeah, absolutely. All right, cool. Do you need a knife? <laughs> <laughs> That's no? Okay, I don't have one. Good. So um, we actually, so, the, the, and these guys reached out to us, right, Mike? So Complete Off-Road. Yeah, we got a is, gift, uh, folks. Yeah, by, from Complete Off-Road, which yeah. is um, Rich Conlon's company. Yep. They created th- these diff covers about 15 years ago. Hold on. <laughs> You're joking. <laughs> I thought we were going to read the notes, Scoopy. I am. So a gentleman named Chris reached out to us, and he asked if we'd be interested in trying out one of his uh, or some of their products. And he said he was asking directly about diff covers. We're like, yeah. Well, this box is freaking huge, bro. Yeah. And it is heavy as shit. Like, I'm not even in the shot. Right. <laughs> I'm also slouching. Oh, yeah, look. <laughs> You're not in the shot. So, anyways, we're going to... You got a knife? Oh, do you need a knife? Yeah, hold on. Hang on. Oh, I don't know where mine is. Oh, whoa. We're just gonna there we go. What is, this, what is this, a pizza review? <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. Hey, they, they, hey, dude, it's sharp on both sides, Note to man. self, if your yeah. knife has a saw on the back, don't hit yeah, it with I'll, your I'll hand. Do, I'll do this, and then you do, you do the slice. I'll do the dice. All right. So, yeah, so this came from there Complete Off-Road, Rich... Conlon. These are 15 years ago. He put out a really heavy product, or he wanted a heavier duty product diff cover than what was out there normally to the public. And these are 100% made in, hold on, 100% made in America or the USA. Sorry, I should have just stood up. I don't know what the hell I was doing. And most notably, these were on the Bubba Rope Jeep in the Ultimate Adventure 2013, 14, and 16, Max. 15. Um, 15. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, three, three, three years in a row. Also, this guy, if you guys have watched, go to Motor Trend if you have it. I'm pretty sure it's there. I think they started in 2014. All, all, all the UAs are... Not well, all of them, because it starts a way lot, along. Yeah. A lot of the Ultimate Adventures. Or YouTube, if it's not on Motor Trend. Go look up 2014, and they went to this guy's personal property... That's uh, awesome. And they willed there. So. You know, I'm sure I've seen it, but I just don't recall, you know, because there's so many of those by now. Right. I just don't recall, like, because they always do, like, a barbecue or something at someone's property. But um, like you said, we're, we're going to have to go back and rewatch all those and, you know, just to kind of see, like, who, who some of these um, people are. This is a lot of packing. Nice. Safety first. I should open this shit at my house, bro. <laughs> Cherry pick. <laughs> Look at this. We got some, some T-shirts. That's awesome. Oh, we, let's just get yeah. everything out of the box. There we get go. Get this box off of here. Ooh. <laughs> Those were stickers. Hold on. What is it? A box inside of a box. Chris, what are you doing to us, buddy? Hey, Mike, Mike you're scaring the dog. We got the podcast dog in the studio today. You just keep talking, buddy. Oh, filibusting? Yeah. Ooh, Dude, We got stickers. lots of stickers, guys. All of our crew and our friends. We got tons of stickers. Very nice. Yeah, I'm definitely excited to um, put one of the Dana 60 diff covers on the Liberty, and we are going to be, we're, I mean, we're going to put it, we already put diff covers to the test, because I mean, I, I have I have crashed into some boulders here in Arizona where like, I thought my teeth were going to fall out a couple times, you know? Dude, speaking of which, so I have a manual, right? A stick. Yep. And a 7465. On this last weekend when we were wheeling, I hit a rock so freaking hard, it knocked it out of gear, dude. <laughs> Which, <clears throat> hold on, don't go that way. Oh, good job. Ta-da. I'll tell you what, you're, there's no way your Jeep is going to weigh less than mine when you throw these Dude, bad it boys is. on. I, I, I figured out a way. I'm going to shave a 1,000 pounds off my Jeep. Oh. But I can't tell you what it is. It's propi- uh, proprietary secrets. You should always carry a pocket knife. 
You're going to need it to take some of these staples out. No way. You, Doggy Max, DM, buddy. What are you doing back here? <laughs> I got the box thrown on me because Papa Max. So we moved the doggy gate in the in the um, huge studio that we run here. Uh-huh. And um, now Doggy Max has invaded our personal podcasting space. And he's currently moseying around under the table where all the Mike threw the super interesting paper. Pick one. Ooh. Ready? Okay. I got do you these. want me to say so left, we have do you want me to say left or right or yeah. gray or black? No. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what we got. We got two t shirts, one nice. black, one gray. Yep. Different things. Both are XL. I saw one had a cool grill on it. Did it? Okay. Yeah. So now I have them in my arms. Okay. Can you see them? Nope. I'm cheating. Nope. I, okay, here's oh, here, what I'm gonna I'll, do. I'll no, no, do no. This. No, you're okay. Look. So I have them under the table. Okay. So that you know yep. I, I'm not switching hands. I do not, not I don't I don't I do not know which one is which. I don't even know either. So right. left I'm or right? Driver. My driver, your driver. Yours. Nice. You got the black one. We can Sweet. always trade if you don't want the gray one. Right. <laughs> is it gray? I think it's blue. Oh, is it? Nice. Let's see. Dude, your dog is killing me, bro. You know yeah, what, though? My out. feet are warm now. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, cold freezing. In, it's cold in here today. Look at that, bro. Ooh, a complete off-road t-shirt. Oh, the back's pretty cool on bro, this one. This you're, was meant for you're, me. You're, you're going to be jelly. It is. It's a Willie's. It's a Willie's. See? Destiny. Life behind bars. It's literally oh, like my yeah. life. Behind. Well, complete off-road, established awesome. in 1996. Very cool. These Hell t-shirts yeah, are awesome. And we love stuff like this. Absolutely. We love stuff. We, we all... <laughs> well, that's true. But, <laughs> Just you know, send it. Get, we, DM me for even, an address. Even when, when, when Mike goes to an event... Let me set this down here. Even when Mike goes to an event, I'll be like, hey, you know, if they got like $10 t-shirts or anything, pick me one up too. Yeah, I, I don't I need to be at the event. I just want to see it, you know? Or I just, I just want... The gear. All right, let's get to these diff covers. So the guy sent us Dana sixty diff covers. That's one for awesome. my my axle build that I got going on. What's yep. in here? More stickers? Yeah. Nice. So we got koozies. Oh, big stickers. Whoa. Bro, we can go like back in the eighties when we put them on our window. That people that's current people do that currently. Do they? Yeah. My neighbor put Chevy on his. Does he drive it on his Chevy. Toyota? <laughs> no, on his Chevy. Oh. I was gonna say, doesn't he drive a tundra? No. Oh, no, oh that's another a neighbor. Guy. Oh, another neighbor. Neighbor okay. Bob. Oh, his uh, he Chevelle. Actually, he actually has. So what is that? No, Camaro. Camaro. Oh, whatever. No, no, no. On his truck. He actually has the um, pace car truck for the official NASCAR thing. Whoa. It's street legal? Dude, I'm about to fall over backwards because I have nowhere to go. Snap your fingers and tell him to move. Max, over here, puppy. Come on. Come on. Watch. Now he's, now he's going to be upset and just rip everything Take down. everything with him. <laughs> Whoosh. Oh, you want me to move? Here we go. He is actually a large dog, and he takes up a lot of space. When when he wants to be in your way, he's in your way. <laughs> yeah, he's a big dog. Luckily, the table is taller than him. I had nowhere to back up. Look, all right, let's get to the real stuff. Let's do it. Let's see the quality of these things. I'm excited. I am too, actually. It's like Christmas. Yeah. Very nice packaging. We're not doing an unboxing video because... I could leave this one if you if you wanted lame. to. Oh, okay. Ooh. Oh, but oh, it even comes with a gasket. Look at that. Yeah, I saw that in the um, description on their website. Golly, dude. You can't even lift it. Oh, and oh. hardware. That's and awesome. Hardware. All right. That is insane, bro. Yeah. How heavy that is. Really? Let me feel. Let me give it a. You know, I'm, I'm very strong, so it might not seem that heavy to me, but I, I know, uh, you know, that, my, my that's old powder age. coated. Oh, must. Oh. Um, you know, I, b- I bet you it's comparable to um, the rough stuff, what we currently have. Yeah. I think it's way thicker. It's cool. It's very cool. What's rough stuff? It's like 30, three eighths? Yeah, three eighths. You know what's funny is. But this is cast, right? Uh, yeah, cast iron. Is that what he said? Cast, cast steel? Steel, maybe. Trail defense. So That's it has awesome. a plug. I was wrong. I thought it had a drain plug on it. It does not. So it has a lot I, of ribbing on it. Yeah, I really like the recessed holes. They're deep, too. That, dude, that's what I like. Yeah. I was super stoked because um, I wonder if you can you weld to this? What, what do you want to weld to it? Like a, You like know, a I ramp? have that little that pumpkin or that little uh, that bar I have on the bottom of mine. That's welded to the diff cover currently. On your on your that's your front axle or your rear the axle? The rear. Oh, OK. You know, that little slide. Interesting. Thing I have, yeah. Like, I, I, um. I, I bet you we can. Oh, I wonder if the uh, description says what it's what it's made out of. Dude, this is badass. Oh, so it comes with one lube blocker gasket, uh, 10 3 8 by 1 inch socket head cap screws, and uh, one half inch stainless steel plug. Hmm. 
Very cool. cool. Yeah. Hey, man. Thank you. Yeah. We are definitely going to throw these on. Again, Max is going to put his on. Yep. Uh, mine's going for the 60 build, so it'll be a little bit before I get mine out on the trail, but we're going to go beat the but crap out of you. That'll yours. still give you a lot of opportunities to kind of uh, show it off during the build and the progress. And yeah. it, yours will at least look amazing in the meantime. And uh, maybe that'll help us get some good product photos and little things like that. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Get some. Uh... <laughs> it's definitely beef, dude. <laughs> Holy shit. I could see why it's, it's not going to break. Obviously, yeah. it's not going to break. I mean, it's a monster. Yeah, and it looks good, dude. It looks really good. So it's powder coated back black. Has for those that aren't look watching the YouTube video, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ribs on it. Nine reinforcements. Well, probably ribs. half inch or bigger. It looks like it's been machined flat too. You know, that's one oh, of the major issues. Yeah. So be, one thing good about being cast like this is, you know, like when they weld all the like the rough stuff. Yep. If they if not, not to, I've never had an issue with rough stuff. Let's just put mm -hmm. that out there. And that's what we currently run. And that's currently what I love. When he first reached out, I was actually hesitant for a split second. And I was like, yeah. you know what? Because I just, when you get something that works, you know what I mean? Why would you change that? Yeah. So I've been really, I love the rough stuffs and nobody, without a doubt, they're beat or they're tough as nails. These things, I believe, have a lifetime warranty on them. Wow. Right? So, <clears throat> but... The, the big thing is if they weld, they can warp. And I've had issues oh. with leaks when they warp. Not the rough stuff stuff, but you know what I mean? Yeah. I, because we're talking about rough stuff. Oh, okay. That's what I currently have. But rough stuff has machined their base. And I think that that's the same here. But with the cast, you don't get that God, weld. Look at that. Look at that edge, too. You know, it's, it's that's an a half extreme, inch, bro. It's extremely thick, so they can countersink those, um, these bolts. That's, that's very cool. You know, I do have problems on my current diff cover. I have to swap the 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 bolts out once in a while or kind of rotate off. them yep. yeah they're getting like ground smooth and then you can't get sockets on them anymore so yeah that is badass i'm definitely excited to throw this thing on yeah it looks awesome very very cool i wonder if you can weld to this so if, if you guys know if you can cast iron i'll call chris yeah. and ask him so these guys are seven springs customs i thought it was, uh so maybe huh. maybe like one's the producer and one's the distributor see because yeah. here the sticker comes with um Trail oh, tra oh, that's the that's the name of the cover trail. Defense. So you have seven springs customs, but at the bottom is complete off road dot com. Hmm. Let's go check it out. Very cool. So we'll put these on the test and look for a, a future review and maybe a future video of you smashing it into something. Yeah. I mean, we're good at that. <laughs> yeah, <so. laughs> I'm going to have to put a GoPro there just in case because I yeah. didn't mean just, to smash into that rock over yeah. the weekend. I'm sure everybody that, that's been wheeling for a while has had that happen, though, where you just crack into something so hard that it's like it's like jarring in the cab of the Jeep, you know, where you're like, oh, bro, like, I, that was insane. The, the worst is when you parked and you didn't know you parked like one inch away from the biggest diff grabbing rock in the world. It happens every and, time. And you go to start the Jeep and all you do is go clunk and you're like, stall. Right. right. And, and then everyone's watching, of course. And, <laughs> of and course. in that instant, you're like. Or you can't even drive forward? All right. So speaking of all this trail talk right now, because that all happened on our last trip out. Yeah. Right? We had a big-ass congestion traffic jam as we were social distancing. So let's get to that. Ready? Yep. Trail talk. Trail talk. I don't have a tr an intro for that, so just do it. You just did it, actually. Trail <laughs> talk. <laughs> okay. I'll look who's back. <clears throat> the dog. Slip into his DMs. Yeah, so we wanted to actually go try and wheel a pretty hard trail because, you know, we had all been kind of cooped up and weren't, weren't doing a lot for a while. Yep. So we wanted to go run, um, we'll code name it SB, the right. trail. And we showed up. You know, we, what do we have? Three Jeeps total? Yep. We got Jesse with us in his green JK, Steve with his maroon JK, and myself with the wheelies. Uh, everybody else belled. So this trail is not, no joke. Um, we'll try and make it to the end down by the uh, lake. Anyways, that's it. Stay tuned. So I'm the only one who's, me and Max are the only ones who've been in here so far. And uh, uh, these guys haven't been through yet. So we're going to try and get these guys through unscathed. Last time I came in, I ended up hitting both sides of my Jeep and the rear. So it's going to be a chore to keep these really nice Jeeps in uh, in good shape. But uh, look at this thistle, dude. Look how sharp that is. Look at that. That's crazy, bro. Weeds are wild. Everything in the desert wants to kill you. So, anyway. Yep. So, we showed up with a couple friends, 
and there was two to three feet of water right. down the entire length of the trail from where we could see. Literally where you as, get in to start yeah. the trail. And, and we came from a really high elevation, and it was very shimmery, the trail. And I was like, it's running full of water. That's what I thought, but I, you couldn't tell. Right, as and, until we um, got closer. And once we got close, I mean, it, we nobody even was going to try to walk in it. That's how, like, it, it was r- ripping so fast. I think it would have swept people away. And Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, like, it was, I mean, it was a raging river. So we get down to the water, or to the trail, is where we'd enter. It's way too deep, and it's flowing hard, and it only gets harder. So this is a bust. We're going to head up to Sunflower Mine, see if we can hit that next. Yeah, and, and that trail is no joke. Yeah, it's it's too hard to wheel, probably just wet. Even. I would say it's like a four and a half out of five. That's just it. dry. I think it's a five out of five. Do you? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Well, I, we've also we've I've heard people say it's not as hard as collateral damage. Oh, okay. But it's five times as long, and you have to come back. Yep. You got to come back the way you came <laughs> you in. You got to do yep. it twice. Yep. So yeah, down and out, and um, yeah. maybe the length is what makes it so challenging too. You know, like. Well, like you said, everything is round, gigantic river rock, yeah. right? The size of your Jeep. Yeah. And and sand. You're so, driving through sand trying to get up on round rocks. So imagine you have a two-car garage, folks, and Uh-oh. it takes three rocks to fill that to the top yeah. from side to side, top yeah. to bottom, full yeah. length, everything. Yeah. Three rocks in a two-car garage. A- and, of course, everything in between, too. Yeah. You know that not every rock is that big, but no. what you come up to some of the obstacles, and you're like... That picture mm. we're, we're winching off on the last hardest obstacle <laughs> yeah. is absolutely two of those yeah. would have filled the garage. Yeah. So, yeah, you're right. And then on top of that, like you said, it's all sand. So the yep. second you spin a tire, you're you're just high centered. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So we had to we had to use the winch like five times a piece going down that just yeah. to get unhigh centered. That was awesome. Yeah. And there's yeah. times there where you just have to work it for a while, and 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 oh. you don't even need a spotter because it doesn't matter what they say. Like. Right. The, the, it's kind of obvious where you got to go, but doing it is different than yep. saying it to someone, you know. So so if you have if we didn't mention it, we've done this trail in the in dry weather. Yeah. Right. So you and I've done it and we are bringing Jesse with us. Yep. So like you said, you said it actually the best when you said you can't just look at the obstacle you're on. You have to look 30 yards in front of you Yeah. because you that one sets you up for the next one yep. and if you screw up, you're totally screwed. Yep. So uh, imagine like a football field just full of boulders. And if you do the first obstacle, you know, Oh, you got out of the end zone, but Hey, now you're stuck on like the one yard line right? (laughs) and you got the whole football field to go. A prime example is I, so I had this, it's a section where I was going down and you were like, let's one shot this or whatever. (laughs) And all I had to do is go left, but I rode up high on that one there. So I went, I was going driver or left and I took the passenger side tire really high on a rock Mm -hmm. and I could have just drove off and we got a little tippy. I decided to back up. Uh-oh. And because these rocks are round, as soon as I backed up a little, I slid off, and that huge rock was stuck between the drive shaft, yep. the leaf spring, literally under everything, and I had to get winched off. Yep. It just slides, and there's nothing you can do about it. Yep. So It's a good trail. Yeah. So back to where we were. We went there first, totally full of water, Yep. came it, up with plan B. So we, we chose not to risk it. Not even. It wasn't even... A we wouldn't choice. even drive across it. No, yeah. <laughs> it would have been just dumb. like like it would have flooded everything. Yeah, but um, so we went and ran um, Sunflower Mine Trail. Yeah, we had a group, a friend, a friend with a group going out the yep. next day to yes. Sunflower, and I saw a video or saw a picture where a guy said it had a ton of water in it, but it was good. So we knew somebody passed it the weekend prior. Yep. So nice. <clears throat> so and we decided to jam up, and it was only what ten miles up the road. Yes. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah, and Sunflower Mine's always a good one, you know, like e- even if you just do the first part of it, you yeah. know, you can take like the kids to see that old mining equipment and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. And you can always head back out from there because I think it gets a little more challenging after the mine. Mm-hmm. And um, and last time we did it, the, the so there's a section that there's an arrow that points you up to this shelf road. And everybody cuts up onto the shelf road. In the old days, we used to be able to go straight and stay in the wash. Yes. And l- last time we did, did, did it. We went up on the shelf road, but we wanted to stay in the wash, but mm-hmm. they had two down trees and we weren't sure if they were trying to limit us and get us up on that shelf road. Yeah. You and I went to the Overland Expo or whatever that was, some expo, 
we talked to the Tonto National Forest Ranger yep. station, and they said, no, we want you in the wash. Stay yep. in the wash. Don't go up on that road. Because that shelf road was designed for mining equipment a long time ago, right? So they can actually get in and out. And to repair and cut off that one spot. They had to yes. do some repairs in there. Exactly. So they yes. used that road for a repair. Yep. But it's really weird because... But it's not maintained. And it's it has continuous little washouts on it. Yeah. So maybe on a smaller vehicle or even a side-by-side, you'd be okay. But a six thousand pound wide Jeep, you're I mean, you are riding the edge on some of those washouts. Yeah, it's definitely and close. It's, it, it can be dangerous. So so yeah, they do want you in the wash, stay down in the wash. But it's really weird, it's deceiving because when we got to that section, yeah, there's a really definite arrow pointing over there. Yeah. But that guy told us that's pointing to the wash. It's not pointing to the top of the hill. Oh, okay. But it, it you can't if you just pulled up and didn't know that, yeah, you have no idea. Interesting. But we stayed in the wash. Yeah, the, the dead someone, trees are gone. Someone took care of the trees. Yep, which dead was trees awesome. are gone. It's been recut. Yeah, and it was a blast, bro. Yeah. That it's is challenging, huh? Like, yeah, dude. I mean, it, it, I bet you it was a minimum one foot of water throughout the whole trip, the whole right? Trail. Yep. And then, um, not well. I mean, there's high and low roads, but if you're in the wash, minimum one foot and yeah. and deeper. Dude, there was that one section just in there. I goofed off on a little bit. The hardest part about wheeling in water. You don't know what's under there. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? You're literally yeah. driving yeah. by Braille. You're yeah. you're just feel. Where's yeah. that rock? What's that doing? Definitely a lot less traction. Yeah. You can't see some of the obstacles. There and, was and you slide around a lot. There's one section where there was that big rock in the middle and then a heavy like you get up on the edge of the the, the ditch, sort of, on the right. Is so, that where we passed the side by sides? Nope. Oh, way okay. before that. Oh, okay. This is just after we stayed in the wash. So okay. it's the, the very hard first hard obstacle oh, we, in we that. We skipped wash. it. No, I went in it. I oh, went over you? it. Yeah. We all did it. My point of it was is I played around on it for a second because with it, I had a 39-inch tire, two-thirds of the water, underwater, <laughs> yeah. and it still had to climb up three foot of rock. You know what I mean? Like, And I, I thought I was going to high center right there, but it didn't. It flopped over. And nice. It was actually way easier than I thought it was. Yeah. But but it's a whole other obstacle in your mind huh? when to, you can't to deal, see the rocks. To, to deal with the, th- the I can't even talk. The thing you can't see messes yep. with your mind. Yeah, it is fun though. Something about I had a grin the entire freaking yeah. time nice. just because of the water, dude. Yeah. So, I I definitely think the water was a huge highlight for Sunflower Mine because mo- I think most of the year it's dry. I I've only wheeled it one other time with water flowing like that. Yeah. And I can't remember if you were there or I not. I wasn't. Because um, you ran into snow on that trip, didn't yeah, you? Yeah. It, it it was a snowy weekend. And um, I think there was already a lot of runoff coming from the mountains. So all those washes were flowing pretty good. Yeah. And I, I remember from that trip years ago, one of my tool bags like flopped out. I mean, in one second, it was like <laughs> underwater. You're like, ah, oh, come on. Hey, that would have been nice if you had this. I know, a Titan tool bag. Yeah. I wish. So Brennan's garage. So w- those that aren't watching the YouTube channel over at Keep a Simple Off Road, which you should be also watching if you want to see what we're talking about. Anyway. Uh, Brendan, my friend Brendan's garage, he owns Titan tool bags, and this bag is 98% waterproof. Yeah, just I would the say. zipper isn't right, or, or yeah. like something with the zipper. Or... Yeah, it's built like a raft, like a whitewater raft where all the seams are glued. Nice. But you could, if that hits the water, you got a split second or two to get it and get yeah. it out of the water. To where my cloth one that was just heavy, it just went bloop, Everything. under, gone. Yeah. Well, I rust. mean, I got it back, but. Yeah. You, then you got to like start cleaning and I never <laughs> did. And then those tools got rusty yeah. and then I probably got upset. And then... So head over to Brennan's garage, Ooh. Brennan hyphen garage. Anyway, you can pick yourself up a bag. Cool. Anyway, move back on. Yeah. So we, uh, the trail was fantastic. That trails normally ran clockwise and there was a set of, uh, side oh, yeah. by sides clockwise. coming counterclockwise, counterclockwise yeah. who'd never been on the trail. And it happened to be in one of the really hardest positions there, hardest sections. It, it was definitely a bottleneck in the wash. Yeah. You, it's what it's the one. Yeah. So you have to cut down across the river, up, squeeze between a rock and a big ass rock, a tree, yep. a tree and a big ass rock, or drop off. You, you zigzag through the trail right there. Exactly. Yep. A big old Z turn. Or you, the, there's a really hard section of rock right there. If you stayed in the wash, you could bypass yep. the tree and the rock. So we got five side by sides coming down. Three of us coming up, one of the side by sides was stuck right in the middle of the yep. Z. So he he comes running down. He's telling us to wait. We're like, no, we're fine. We'll pull up. We're talking blah blah blah. So we get to talking to him. Steve ended up having to. Um, yeah, he pulled one of the side by. He got up out. and pulled that guy out. And I just drove straight in and did one of those things where you pull straight in, thinking, "Oh, great! I get my front tires up on the hardest section, get it out there. I'm just going to drive over." <laughs> but I didn't. I ended up getting getting stuck. 
Um, we pulled that guy. Steve pulled that guy out, and then we had four other guy, four other razors that couldn't make up their mind yeah. for whatever the hell they yeah. were doing. Or maybe they were just a little intimidated. Like maybe it was so rocky they were like, "Oh, well, I'd rather go this way than that way." Yeah, they you wanted know, to like, go where we were parked, which was large boulders way harder than the big <laughs> rock but they thought they were so wide that they couldn't the, the one yeah. guy's like oh, i'm so wide man. i didn't like, see that at all me neither but so clearly i think they got yeah because that spooked. guy got stuck and they spooked, got spooked. yeah well during this time we had 10 more jeeps show up and those guys had enough common sense to scoot over to the left or scoot over to the right and leave a path for the side-by-sides to come through. oh cool we're still waiting and waiting and waiting and we're all talking. And so you have this raging river yeah, and we have loud. Yeah. Loud. Nobody can hear anybody. Everybody's yelling. Um, anyway. So then another group of five Jeeps pulled up and blocked the road. The razor guys weren't moving. We weren't moving. Yeah, now, we, we have, now we're in the middle of, yeah. of a razor group and another Jeep <laughs> yeah. group. We have 15 Jeeps and four razors we got to get by yeah. all in this big ass section which took probably an hour to yeah. get through there well i think there's a lot of that where no one made a choice right and, yeah. and no. i don't know who in the end made that choice but they said move the i don't know who yeah it was but me. they i don't know who but oh. <laughs> <laughs> it but was they, me yeah and then you, i guess you just had him you split those razors up moved a couple here moved a couple there yeah and i then finally we, and then we all drove through so i hopped across and i talked to those guys and i said look it's easier for you four to get out of the way and yeah. let all of us through yeah so luckily us three were in the front of the jeep groups nice. you know so we were able to just like you said we kicked those guys out yep. well they moved out of the way and we boogied yeah we we got lost so after we got past them and across the wash there was another single jeep coming down and he was he was setting up there the whole entire time without ever walking down. He had oh, no idea. Oh, he was idea. just parked. I did yeah. see that. I did. That see guy that. decided he was coming down after we went through, and the, we still had oh, us three passed, and then he just cut in. Yeah, fifteen more jeeps got to come through. He decided to come in and wouldn't budge, dude. Oh wow! Those guys said he that guy was not moving. They had to get out of the way for him. Whoa! And, because he just was over. He wasn't going to wait. Anymore. Yeah. I, I noticed that a lot. Uh, a lot of people still have no patience while off roading. When you just gotta, sometimes you just gotta wait a little, you know. Like, Dude, you couldn't ask for a better place. Yeah, to be yeah. hanging out. You oh know yeah, what I mean? it was nice. Right, and just the temperature, the the water. That well, it was literally. It, it was nice until I dunked my feet in the water. You know, which, I watched which wasn't you, that bad. Wait a minute, <laughs> I watched you try to run lightly across the water. I saw no, you looking I, for a rock, and was, you just went fuck it. Yeah, my my shoes were already soaked. Oh. I, I, I did like, that when that, um, I was helping Jesse because he, he got turtled on his belly mm. and um, and I just like slipped because it was all kind of like rounded with some sand where he got stuck yeah. and I just slipped right into the water and I was like, ah, so close. What do you think Jesse's Jeep's worth? Money wise? Yeah. It's pretty built. Um, 50K. Sir, is that really <laughs> your thing? Yeah. What, do you think, what do you think Chris Bears is worth? Yeah, 20. Oh, it's because it's, it's currently beat broke. like a turd. You know what I mean? <laughs> you said Fire. what it's worth, not what they put into it. It's never worth what no, you put into it. I was walking back down when Jesse was stuck. Yeah. And somebody said, that's what a hundred grand looks like stuck. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, really? That thing's a hundred grand? It Maybe. is badass. It's got triple bypass shocks on it. Yeah. And yeah. What's that kit that they have with the, the cantilever shocks? and What company makes it? Yeah. It's, you, um, it's a badass. Off-road kit. evolution. Yeah. It's like they're dual shock per corner kit it's cool dude all i know is when we were in moab <clears throat> a guy had that with a 500 horsepower jeep yeah same exact kit and it spun the pit the pumpkin yeah. and left the tubes you know what i mean was, was that a um 14 bolt sorry i, c I couldn't think of oh, the, the sterling 10.5 oh. i think Ooh. is what he had but it so it spun the pumpkin but the point of that was is that suspension is so stout. Yeah. It didn't do anything to it. That's and they crazy. were able to re-rotate the pumpkin back down without adjusting anything. Yeah. Like that's crazy. But do you think that's the control arms holding it? I yeah. don't think shocks are that I don't think no, shocks no. are holding much. No, no. Control arms oh, are oh, all oh. the setup. Okay, but the okay. way that thing is built. Oh, I guess the complete kit is that stout. I see what you're yeah. saying. Yeah, the tube stayed in place and yeah, the pumpkin dude. the Sick. pumpkin went for a ride. Exactly. And then they were able to just bend the pumpkin down and yeah. re-weld it back on and the guy was out wheeling cliffhanger the next day. That's so, amazing. Yeah. That's it, really cool. So, badass kit. That's my point of all that. So, anyways, yeah, Jesse's on what? 40s? 42s? 40s? Tires? Yeah, yeah. 40 inch tires. Dana, what, what does he have? Yeah, um, Dana 60s. Yeah, but the I think he had the Pro ultimate, Rocks or something, right? I think he had Ultimate Dana 60s, I yeah. think. Pretty dope ass Jeep. Yeah. So, anyways. And it's clean. Yep. I'm kind of glad maybe we didn't go on, on, on the SB trail. 
because uh, it might have it might have come out a little scuffier, scratch a little. Which bit. he he knew, you know. We warned everyone about the the difficulty, what we went through before, you know, we what other people have been through, <laughs> and and we warned them, and and people still want to go. You, you remember know? in the beginning when we would sort of find somebody that was similar to ours, and we would copy them, right? Like with uh, like wheeling or build wise. No, so we would find somebody that with a similar Jeep, and we would follow that line. Oh yeah. So I would look and be like, oh wait, I can. My Jeep's as built as that. I could do whatever he does. Yeah. Well, it's kind of deceiving because Steve has got way more ass in the seat time than Jesse does yeah. on his Jeep. Yeah. But G- Steve's Jeep is just as nice. Exactly. So you look at that as Jesse, and you're going, I can go wherever Steve goes. But Steve will put that shit in some crazy spots. Yep. And, and then and sometimes the same line just doesn't work out the same way. Absolutely. E- even if they were equal, you know, right. so that, that water, man, it's tricky. And being an old time wheeler like myself, oh. <laughs> <coughs> who was in wheeling a long time ago. That's why I built a, a, a wrinkled up tinfoil piece of, you know, <laughs> yeah. piece of 48 wheelies. Yeah. So it's so I don't have to worry about smashing yeah. anything. Well, same with the Liberty. You know, I had already bought a $30,000 right. JKU off the lot. <laughs> and I, I did not want to do that again. You know, not for the rock crawling that we're doing. I ran across a picture with you with the stock rims on it. Nice. I was like, damn, that yeah. was old, dude. Yeah. So 2014, probably. Crazy, huh? But yeah, so um, so the trail went in. So that trail's just beautiful. You you look, you're like literally in a rainforest. Yeah. The whole entire way going up a river, and you could do a big ass loop. Yep. Um, or you could go instead of hanging a right where it starts to climb up a big ass crazy hill. You can keep going past that. And there's like a old delivery van. Yeah. It was probably like 10 minutes or five, 10 minutes past yeah. the turnoff to, to probably go another the mile or so. Yeah. yeah. And um, how in the world? So there's a full blown delivery van in the middle of this river wash back there. Well, probably the same way they got mining equipment in back in the day. Right. Yeah. Uh, maybe it, it just was fell that off maintained. Edge, maybe. maybe it was that maintained of a road at one point. That's crazy to think yeah. about that. So I'll tell you what, though, <laughs> when we pulled up, I don't remember that saying bridge out. Yeah, I saw. I only saw that sign on the way out because it was on the driver's side, and yeah. I was riding with our friend, and um, I was like, "Ooh, someone just threw that bridge out sign to the side, huh?" Yeah, dude, <laughs> did you see me go across the bridge? Uh, dude, I stopped oh, we're, it. We're, oh, oh uh, yeah. So we pull up, and I pull up the sign, and Steve's like, "Just go," and I'm yeah. like, "It says bridge out," and he's like, "Just go." So we go to that it. bridge is not going nowhere. No, and then I saw the. The actual blockade sign, like you said, just yeah. tossed off on the side. <laughs> Fuck this. This bridge works. But that trail would be closed, I think. Like closed, closed. I wonder if, what it's if out the there bridge for was, then. Maybe just someone messing with people. Like they, they stole it from a construction <laughs> site or who knows. All I know is I put the front tires on that bridge <laughs> and I dumped the clutch, man. Whoa! And I zipped nice. across that fucker. Dude, what if the... you stalled right in the middle of it and it's creaking and like wobbling? And yeah. Which that, that bridge is, it's pretty solid. It's been... <laughs> It's been there since ever we wheeled it the first time. I just like, never remember seeing the bridge outside. Yeah. So I, I remember a couple of years ago, somebody said they're going to do maintenance on that bridge. Maybe that's what they did. Maybe that sign is from when they were doing maintenance on yeah. the trail. Remember when that whole. That was closed. It was closed because they, closed they it had off. to fix that V-notch part. Yep. Yep. So. Damn. Hmm, who knows? I know. But once again, Scottle Steve came through for lunch. Yep. I love that fucking trail. Steak on the Scottle. We, we, you know, we had some nice tortillas. Yeah, I Mike, brought Mike ate too much once again. <laughs> I brought peanut butter and tortillas. Yeah, who the hell does that? And Whatever. then, but Steve brought yeah, Scottle Steve brought the Scottle, delicious meat. Yeah, tacos. Holy shit, that was good. We had trail tacos, yeah. not street tacos. Oh, trail tacos. That's right. There's no street. That's right. You gotta have a street for street tacos. They were good. Jesse's kids were well behaved. They're That's actually cool. really fun. We did stop by the mine. I also love kids, so that doesn't bother me at all. Were they? Bu- did they bug you? They didn't bug no. you. They're cool. Huh? They're they're quiet enough. I was all right. Quiet. They were they were crazy. I love that they were running oh. all over the place and stuff yeah. like and jumping around. And Jesse was pretty cool. Yeah. He sent me a book. Um, yeah, a I, new saw, audio I saw book. there's like a book club going on with yeah. you guys. He's like oh, he's like my Oprah, <laughs> the book club. <laughs> Jesse's book club. It's pretty good. It's a lot more tech or like um sci fi nerdy sort of shit. Yeah. But but entertaining. Probably, guy, right? I don't know what he does, but he's pretty fucking. I'm a lot dumber than him. Mm. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Yeah. So, cool cat. I'd go out wheeling with that guy again. No problem. Nice. Good job, Jess E. I wanted to call him Je- Jason. Isn't there a Jesse? He's Jason. Isn't there a Jason Clayton, too? Oh, with He's, the same lot? I don't know. Uh, anyway. I mean, maybe. I but you know a lot more people than me. Uh, I don't think so. Because every story, maybe the names are finally jumbling around in, in your mind. I'm getting old, bro. <laughs> <laughs> This is bullshit. What are you? Okay. What are you? High thirties now? 
Hey, my birthday's <laughs> coming up, bro. Nice. Two days. Really? Yeah. Whoa. Happy early birthday, because I'll probably forget. I'm going to be the big, no, 4'9". 60? 4'9". Oh. Damn. I know. Dude, I pull that shit off good, bro. Yeah. I'm almost 50. I could be your granddad. No. Pops. My dad's way How older. How old are you? 35. My dad's way older. 35, than you. 45. Uh, I'd have to be 15. I guess oh. I could have. You could yeah. be my kid. Yeah. You could. you could. How old is your actual son? I don't even know, dude. Nah. I seriously, in the 20s. Oh, okay. He's 20s. Mid 20s. Yeah. yeah. I seriously would have to. That's yeah, so a ten math. year difference. I don't even know how old I am. If you go to my house, <laughs> there's a whiteboard, and on the whiteboard it says the age. Mike, you are this age. Yep. Yeah. That's no bullshit. Yeah, cool. It's actually there. I I don't know how old a lot of my friends are. Dude, I was. Did I send you the video? Remember, I told you I have all these crazy things about our house, <laughs> like the laundry, the current laundry. Oh, the bag. Yeah. 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 I was going through. <laughs> I was trying to mark something on the calendar. The calendar is from 2016. <laughs> <laughs> what, the months? Someone just closed it down and put January back up? It's the same freaking... No, it's on November of 2016. Oh, it never dude. moved. I got you. That's I was funny. like, what in the world? But it's in the <laughs> kitchen. It's the main calendar, dude. That's awesome. Like, no wonder I'm missing everything. You know your phone has a calendar. Uh, and you can save stuff to it. Uh, and, and it alerts you on that date and time you saved it to. Whatever. Cool, yeah, it was dude. definitely a really cool trip. I was super glad we got to go back out wheeling. Yeah, Max, I don't um, have to sell the Jeep. You don't? No, because I was going to sell it if I didn't... Uh, go wheeling? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Are you lifting weights, bro? Yeah. Why are you manscaping? My arm? Yeah, why are you shaving super your bushy. arms? My arms are super <laughs> bushy, and um, I have no, like, trimmer pieces. Like, We're, you know, to make it, like, shorter. Oh. So I just... I got nothing. You know, I'm quarantined. I got nothing to do. You've been on roids. You're taking yeah. roids. You're going to start building. Yeah. Work it out. Oh. So during this time, I'm just adding this in. If you need some more content, some more podcasts to listen to, you know, we have a lot of cool people that we've met along the way. Absolutely. You know, Wheeling Wine and Whiskey, the Snail Trail Podcast, um, Seven Slot now. Seven Slot Society, hands down. Yep. He's starting um, to do, Angel's starting to do way more podcasts. Yep. That was a big, long breath because I was pausing. Should I say this or not? I love his podcast. Mm -hmm. I do. I don't know something about that dude's voice is awesome to me. You okay. know what I mean? He's got a cool voice. But holy shit, when he does his podcast in the van, he either needs to roll the window up or he needs to pull <laughs> the fuck over or something, dude. Something. You got to figure that out. Because, mm -hmm. dude, you know what's the best about him? And I wish we could do that too. Like you should do podcasts if you just have a thought. He'll yeah. do a ten minute podcast because yeah. you'll just a have a tangent. thought. Yeah. That's it. Pull the fuck over and start That's ranting awesome. and raving. So you should do them too. I should do them. And those will just be podcast ones. You know what I mean? Yeah. The bonus bonus stuff. ones. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah. That's my only complaint. His live stuff is fantastic. It's crystal clear. Yep. His last video that he or his last podcast he just did was with a guy from Crawl TV. How that guy started up Dirt Lifestyle or something like mm -hmm. that. Anyway. Check that one out because it was really. Oh fantastic. no, not dirt lifestyle. Uh, dirt something. That's somebody. But regardless. Uh, oh okay, yeah, that's but, dirt lifestyle. But what, what I was getting at, there's a lot I'm of good sorry. podcasts out there, even people that we haven't even met yet. But go follow them. Go check it out. Go listen to it. You know, ch try some out. If you like them, that's great. If you don't, don't. You know, I mean, <laughs> there's always going to be something that one of us doesn't like. But um, right now is the time to to figure out something you do <clears throat> like and and move forward with that. I also want to say that. W so. Like you have the snail trail boys that are a lot of tech, yeah. real tech. Like Jimmy right now is building a third gen or something he's doing, but it's a yeah. full build. Really good. His videos are good. Snail trail guys. You have the wheel and wine and whiskey guys that are mostly lately a lot of whiskey and a lot of, you know what I mean? Like Ooh. they're getting around. They've been in distillery, Jason, yeah. but they're good dudes. Yep. Oh, wait, big time. You know what I mean? But their wheeling content is limited too because Chris really doesn't wheel too much anymore. And Jason gets out and wheels, but everybody's kind of locked down. So if you want techie stuff, especially I would California, cell trail, snail trail. The, my point of this was, is we're more just flat, random entertainment. Yeah. That's, I think why I like the seven slot society guy so much because oh, he's, so it's a little more like it's just what, random what, shit. Yeah. The other day he had his kid on there. Taylor. It's content. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, like riv at first I was like, is it really? Like, and I thought it was just going to be an intro, you know, uh -huh. but that little kid was mouthy, dude. Like, he had actual <laughs> thoughts. You know what I mean? Like, it, it turned out to be really good. Plus, I got the grandkids. So, like, I don't know. I really enjoyed the one with the grandkids or with the, with his kid. But I like that he goes on these random tangents. He curses a lot. He's not, like, 
professional. He's not in a reserved way. or like yeah, yeah. yeah very and I cool. was worried about that, but you're right. We fall into, you know, like like with this. You know what I mean? The diff cover. <laughs> yeah, I want to show, and I don't, I don't want to embarrass this guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, of course not. But in the same sense, we got to be who we are, and we are. This is entertainment. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're just going to be honest with what we think, what we like, what we don't. and Yeah, like because I was getting stressing about the drinking stuff, and I was like, well, you know what? Yeah. But we're here having fun. That's what this exactly. is about. It has to be fun. And Stay it's not, fun. It's not excessive. You know, like we're not like Jason and Chris where you can barely understand us after like a, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the King of the Hammers. Uh, that Chris, was a joke, by the way. Yeah, Chris got so drunk. <laughs> if you heard, if you, I forget which one it was on, but they were still talking... I don't know. It was like one or two or three ago on the Wheel and Wine and Whiskey yeah. ones. When we were talking about how have, we had 10 people in Chris's camper yeah. instead of the Taj Mahal, which yeah. was literally bigger than my house. So Chris Chris kind of comes in. He's like looking around with that <laughs> void look, dude. He's like, ah, blah, blah, blah. and he just falls back out of the camper and leaves. <laughs> it's like, that's a lot of sausage in that. Camper, uh, but it's, it's funny when people get. That's awesome. It's funny when you're not the one that's super trashed. Nice. You know what I mean? Cool. Uh, on that note, folks, <laughs> that's a wrap. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, share with your friends.